Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for stopping by. So I've been completely fanboying over this camera right here, the uh, A6700. Bang for the buck, what you're getting in this camera with the new autofocus recognition system that you're getting from the A7R5 and the, I believe the ZVE1 as well for about almost $800 cheaper. This thing is packed with features. Yes, I know it's an APS-C, but trust me, it's low light performance is amazing. Autofocus, like I just said, is incredible. 422, 10-bit, it does all the things. It takes great pictures. But today in this video, I went down to the airport with my lovely wife, Kate, and we shot some cool airplane footage. Yeah, yeah, we're really, we're really cool people. I'm gonna take you through some of the footage that I got and some of the pictures that we shot with the A6700 and show you the performance and show you all the cool little boxes and autofocusy stuff that it does. It's really impressive. All right, let's get into it. All right, let's talk about the setup here. Um, first of all, before we get into that, this video you're seeing right here is shot on the DJI Pocket 3. I just got that a few days ago. I gotta tell you, man, the low light, as you can tell, is pretty darn good on this. Going to run through its paces a little bit and there will be a video out about that pretty soon, hopefully uh, by next week. What I used was the Sony G Master 100 to 400, the A6700, the Atomos Ninja 5, and uh, a Condor Blue cable, the HDMI cable connected to the camera on a tripod. Now, do not make fun, man, because my plane tracking skills are not that great. This is the first time I ever tried to do something like this, so I left some uh, goofy stuff in here to laugh at. And there it is, there is the setup. All right, first things first, obviously you have to go into the menu system and change your recognition target to airplanes. Yay. Airplane. I mean, that should, you know, go without saying. Shooting in auto ISO and shutter priority for this entire video. Um, I left it the target or the focus area in the middle and that select focus point thing is there. So uh, yeah, apologize for that, but whatever, no big deal. As you can see, as soon as the wings are visible to the sensor, to the camera itself, the airplane box just drops right on that guy. Pretty awesome. The new Sony AI recognition system is really good. You can also see that the cockpit of the plane gets um, highlighted as well. The box jumps on the cockpit as soon as it sees it. Going through the fence line holds that target on the airplane all the way through, which is pretty impressive. Which brings us into this next shot, this big old Alaska Airlines plane coming through the fence. It did take a second, but it does eventually find it, grabs the cockpit. During the day, I was there also. This is obviously you know at night after the sun has set, and I was shooting from the same position with my A7 IV without the new AI that recognizes these targets. And it was a noticeable uh, lack of autofocusing or a noticeable lack of recognition through this fence. And because I am a uh, pure professional, I don't have any of the video to show you. But believe me when I tell you, this is what happened. To get any kind of clear shot through it, I had to go to manual and then, you know, from there you're trying to just, you know, get the shot. Unlike the A6700, as soon as the camera reads that it's an airplane it's it's sticky man it just jumps on it i thought that shooting at night with the visibility lower making the iso work to really see what was out there this to me was maybe the best example showing the strength of this new system and like i said before in the beginning of the video the amount of money that you're paying to be this good in low light with an aps-c sensor i don't know i mean i just think no, I do know. I think that this is a pretty incredible camera. There was a point where a smaller airplane was not recognized by the system, but like I said, low light, obviously smaller targets are gonna be harder to see, but all things considered, I think it did a pretty incredible job. Let me know in the comments what you guys thought of this AI recognition in low light from an APS-C sensor size camera. Pretty impressive. This last clip was shot on the uh, Sony 11mm 1.8 in S Cinetone. Just wanted to show you guys how that lens handles the low light. 1.8 aperture, obviously it's gonna let more light in. I think that looks pretty darn good. 
And the last thing here is a few shots I took from earlier in the day. Still on the 100 to 400, still shooting auto ISO. What I'm seeing in some of these shots are a noticeable softness to them. Maybe it's something on my end, but the autofocus targets were definitely hitting. I was zoomed all the way out to 400 on all of these, and I did bring them into Lightroom to adjust the crop, and I brought up the exposure as well, but I did not use any other adjustment. I've heard of atmospheric distortion. Not sure if this is it. I don't know. Let me know if you know. All right. That's all I got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Totally appreciate it. Atmospheric distortion. I'm really curious to know why those pictures came out like a little softer, a little bit blurry. Let me know. I'm very curious. I've already said that like three or four times. If you've made it this far in the video, please consider subscribing if you, if you like. It's totally up to you. Even if you don't, I'm still going to be here making these videos. So yes. All right. See you guys soon. Bye. The viewing center, I guess is what this is called. Aircraft viewing area. Uh, I gotta admit, man, I thought I was gonna be the only uh, nerd with a camera down here taking pictures of uh, airplanes, but apparently not, man. There's like a bunch of people just hanging out taking pictures of airplanes and it's pretty awesome. Pretty awesome. There's one right there.